Let's talk a little bit uh, today about displacement maps. A uh, very useful feature where you can combine um, the easy sort of painting ability in Photoshop with After Effects to create perceived depth um, and interesting perspective in a still image in After Effects. Now, previously we've touched on the vanishing point, but this is a little different because it's less geometric and uh, very useful. And, and the reason I touched on it is because with a client, we've been asked to put a small, uh, I think an image of clouds really, and it could just be a static image. But for me, you know, we're a video company. I like to have a little bit of movement in whatever we do. So I took a high resolution still of some clouds a while ago on holiday. I couldn't even tell you why, but uh, so I suddenly thought, well, this could be a good one to demo with because it's not your obvious subject for a displacement map, but it works surprisingly well. So load up Photoshop, load up your image, and then you need to add a new layer above your background. And on this new layer, you need two primary colors. You've got white and you've got black. Um, and the idea is black is farther away from your eyes and white is closer. So the first thing you want to do is toggle your black to the top, make sure that you've got black selected, get your paint bucket and put in black, whereupon the image vanishes. So therefore you need to knock the opacity down a little bit so that you can then see your image. And then it becomes quite nice, especially with something like clouds. What I suggest you do is get the paintbrush here. Um, you can increase or decrease the size of the brush with the right and left square bracket keys. So very easy to do. And what I do is put it on about 25% opacity and a feathered edge because I don't want hard lines on this. It would look very odd with, with clouds. Um, and the idea is, You've already got black, which is the furthest away. So the first step is to paint everything that isn't going to be black. So for example, all these clouds are obviously closer to the eye than the blue in the background. So the first step is just paint them. Now, a little tip is don't take your finger off the mouse button because the minute you do, the overlap of where you start again creates a deeper white because essentially it's layering 25% on 25%. Um, and so you start mucking with the actual depth of what you want to do. So the idea is work backwards, start from the far distance and then move around and just add in the next closest layer. Once you've done that, then absolutely release your mouse button. OK, so that's my first one there. Then I look here and I'm thinking this is probably closer. So I've now released the mouse button, click again and you can see I'm starting to get a slightly deeper white. So I'm doing the next closest to the eye and here you because it's clouds, you don't have to be that accurate. That's the nice thing. And it's down to your artistic ability, ultimately. So here we go. So I'm going to, I'm just assuming that the darker cloud is close to the eye. That's what I'm using. Uh, this looks fairly close as well. I've no idea where that is, but it could be. So that's that. And then you think, OK, out of those bits that we've just done, which are closer out of them? And you do another layer. So you release the mouse button, click and then so forth. Now, the end result is entirely down to how good you are at perceiving depth out of a flat photo. And please bear in mind, uh, this technique works very well with portraits of people. Um, again, try not to have too sort of hard an edge, but um, lots of detail, and all of a sudden, it starts to come together. Now, if I turn up the opacity here, you can see what I've started to do. And you, can you see there? So you've got all different depths. Once you're happy with that, make sure the opacity is up high and just save as a normal Photoshop PSD. So save as and then call it whatever you want to do. Displacement, placement map and save it. And then what you want to do is you want to come into, you want to come into After Effects and you want to import your displacement map file. But the important thing here is import it, but when you get this dialog box, make sure it says composition retain layer sizes and make sure it's editable layer styles and go OK. And you'll see it automatically creates a composition here. So you double click on this. And can you see I've got the two layers there? I've got the displacement map at the top and underneath I've got the clouds. Now, the thing is, you don't need to see the displacement map. And to make it more easily identifiable when you start mucking around, call it map or something. So now 
we go into effects and presets and as you can see if you type displacement map you can find it very quickly and you drag that onto the photo not onto the actual displacement layer and not a lot happens so the thing you want to do here is where it says displacement map layer choose map and then because we've done it on blacks to whites that's essentially luminance so we want both of those channels on luminance I'm going to set these to zero and then if I move these around can you see you've got a nice twist now this this is a 5 megapixel photo sorry not 5 megapixels 18 megapixel so what that means is that when I crop in to a normal composition I can not only move the clouds around but I can pan with it in any way um, so you can get some very nice effects so let's create a new new composition um, let's have it full HD um, everything else is fine and then we're going to drag the displacement mount and you can see now how big my photo is so press S for scale and scale that down to wherever you think is about right and if you go back into the displacement map composition and go into your controls then what you could do is do a very slight animation of this so I'm going to click horizontal um, sorry max vertical and max horizontal uh, displacement do uh, say 10 seconds and then change both of them just grad subtly not too obviously okay so that's my 10 seconds and then when I come into here so you can see now we're starting to get quite a nice effect and all of a sudden your photo becomes a lot more than just a flat static photo and it's a more organic movement um, than with uh, vanishing point plus vanishing point obviously no parallel edges or anything here wouldn't really work very well so remember displacement maps works very well on portraits it can work as well as you have the time to put in uh, the more detail you can put in the better it'll work streets um, lampposts tree uh, sort of distant trees um, or a picture that works in layers like successive different color fields um, works very well on a pan but as you can see it's a very nice effect and it's quite convincing and it's changed what was a very boring photo into something that actually looks remarkably 3D.